Hello, my name is Mike Gag, and welcome to my video on data binding individual controls, which is part of my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. In the previous video, we looked at data binding a data grid view, uh, which was sort of all kind of packaged together uh, with a smart tag, and you know, basically the computer did a lot of the work for you. In this program, we are going to create our own binding source, we're going to create our own uh, text fields, and we're going to sort of do everything manually, so it will give us a, a higher level of control. The first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to add my database to my project, very much like I did in the last video, but I'll do it again so you can all uh, see again how it's done. So I'm going to come up here to data, and I'm going to choose add new data source. Again, I'm going to select database and data set, and I'm going to click new connection. This window will pop up. We will confirm this as Microsoft Access Database. And then we will browse, and it should be right here on the desktop. All right. Uh, no username and password. I'll just test my connection. The t connection was uh, successful. And then I will hit OK. All right. That establishes our string. I do want to hit Yes here. This copies it to our local project. I will save the string. I want all of the tables. And I will hit Finish. OK. So at this point, we have our database added to our project, and now we, be, we can begin setting up our binding. All right, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to set up some things to bind. Uh, there are three fields in this database. There's the survey ID, survey name, and survey email. So I want to have a label for each and a text box for each. All right, and we'll just move these over here. I'm a fiend for having everything line up, so bear with me while I get that done. All right, fantastic. And this label is going to say uh, survey name. Oops, that's going to be wrong. Survey ID, survey name. And survey email, just like that. This text box we're going to call txt ID. This one will be txt name, and this one will be txt email. All right. So now we have the control setup that we're, that we're going to want to bind to. It's time to add our binding source. Now, before we use the smart tag uh, to create a binding source, but if you look at the smart tags here, we don't have that option. So we're going to go ahead and manually do it. I'm going to go over here to my toolbox, and I'm going to scroll down, and I am going to look to data and find the binding source. And I'll just double-click that, and it pops it right down there. Now we have to tell the binding source what it's going to bind to. You'll notice there's no data set down here, there's no table adapter, or any of that stuff down here that we saw in the last video. It's because we haven't configured our binding source yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Now in order to configure the binding source, we're going to come over here to this data source property. All right, and we'll hit the down arrow. We can see that there aren't any currently established data sources except for this other. So we'll expand that, we'll look at the project data sources, and we find our data set. And that's the one we want to use. And finally, we need to specify the member. So I'm going to click this arrow. And if there were more than one table in this data set, we'd see a bunch of tables. But since there's only one survey, that's the one we're going to select. And now you'll see here we have our binding source, our data set, and our table adapter added to the project. Now that this is done, binding the controls themselves is actually very simple. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the text box here. And I'm going to scroll up. And I'm going to look for this thing called data bindings. All right, and I am going to just choose the text property of that box, and I'm going to choose binding source one, survey ID, and there we go. It's bound to the ID. Same for name. Now with the email, we could just do it the same, but I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, or let me get out of here. I'm going to go ahead and select advanced and hit the dot dot dot. Oops, I'm on the form. Let me get back to the text box. There we go. Uh, advanced, hit the dot, dot, dot. And you can see this advanced menu comes up. It gives us the options to do things like formatting. So I come here to the binding and I choose email. Uh, I can choose some validation. I can choose whether or not it's currency or date time and things like that. Um, instead, I'm just going to come back here and I'm going to bind it like we did the other ones. I just wanted to show you that that option does exist. 
All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and run this. And we will see that our text fields have been bound to the fields of the database. All right, so we've got our 0001, Mickey, Mickey at Disney.com. Now, we can't uh, advance or go back or really change these. I mean, we could change them in the box, but there's no way to save or, or do anything like that uh, just yet. Basically, since we've manually created our binding control, we have to create more controls to give us uh, well better control of our binding, binding source. So let's go ahead and close this here. Now, we saw the binding navigator in the previous video. If I come here to my toolbox and I go down to data, and I find the binding navigator, and I double-click that and choose for the binding source, my binding source one, that works. You know, we can do that. Right? You can see that that allows us to navigate with our binding source, but that's boring. I don't want to do it that way, just because you know we've seen it. You know, let's let's find another way of doing it. Let's be creative here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead instead. I'm going to add a couple buttons, and we'll call this one. Uh, there we go. This one will be BTN back, and it will say back and this one will say forward and B BTN forward just like that so we have our back and our forward buttons and so now what we want to do is we want to add some code to the back and forward buttons to manipulate our binding source to sort of navigate around I'll double click on the back button to get to the code behind now we can't just directly change the position of our binding source. Our binding source doesn't really have a position. What we need is a manager, a manager that will manage our binding source. All right. So we're going to go ahead and add one of those to our project. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to say private binding manager base. So binding manager base, we'll call it bind MGR. All right. That'll be uh, the binding manager for this program. Here in my form load event, after we fill our table or fill our, our data set from our table adapter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify what the bind manager should manage. So what I'm going to say is bind MGR equals binding context, binding context, and then I'll just specify what's my data source. In this case, it's going to be binding source one. All right. So we are looking for the context of the binding source that our binding manager is going to control. At this point, navigation is very simple. Okay, I'm just going to say bind MGR dot position minus minus. That's going to be my back button, and then my forward button is going to be bind MGR dot position. Oops, plus plus. All right, so let's run this. So now I have the first record. If I hit forward, I got the second record, and then the third record. You'll notice I can't go out of bounds. And I can go back and again can't go out of bounds. So awesome. Now we are able to navigate around by manipulating the position of our binding manager base, which in turn controls our binding source. We can go ahead and, and change values in here, but you'll notice that they don't get saved. Uh, if you remember from the previous video, uh, we'd only be ma manipulating the data set in this case we wouldn't be manipulating the database itself so again we need to write that code that allows us to update the database with the changes that we've made so I'm going to close this I'm going to come back here and I'm going to add another button all right this button will say update and it will be BTN update and I'll double click on it and just like before, the code is going to be exactly the same as in the previous video. Well, more or less exactly the same as the previous video. I'm going to start with a try block. And I'll say catch exception ex. And we'll do message box show ex.message. First thing we want to do is we want to say binding source one dot end edit. All right, that'll just stop uh, any edits that were, were currently taking place. And then we're going to say, um, now what's the name of my table adapter? Survey table adapter. Survey table adapter dot update. And the, uh, what we're going to update is the uh, survey for lecture data sets dot survey table. All right. And then we'll say message box dot show. We'll just throw a quick updated there so we know that worked and then finally 
uh, oh, no, that's right, survey table adapter dot fill. We're just going to refill our survey uh, for lecture data set just to make sure our data is the most current. All right. And so we'll run that. I'm going to change Mickey to be Mike. I'm going to change Donald to be some garbage. And I'm going to change Goofy, uh, Goofy's email to be some garbage. I'll hit update. I see that I updated. All right. You'll notice that my position was reset back to one. All right. I didn't stay on Goofy where I was. Uh, the reason is in case you delete a record or something, you don't want to... You don't want to stay where you're at and then have that record cease to exist. You'll get, a, you'll get an, uh, an exception if that happens. So let's close it. We'll rerun it. And we'll see our changes were saved. Excellent. Okay. So that's going to conclude my video on binding individual controls. You can see that binding controls really isn't all that difficult. Uh, if you want to manually do it like we did in this video, all we really need to do is create our own binding source and choose which controls are data bound. And we, we have a ton of option there, uh, and the great thing about this is that we can choose which data is displayed and, and how that data is manipulated in the control. So uh, we talked about adding our own binding source. We talked about uh, using the binding navigator with our custom binding source. We talked about hard coding or, or manually creating our own navigation by using a binding manager base. And again, we talked about the update code required to update the table adapter and thus update the database.